Day ships came out, got sent around the office, and we challenged everyone to go out and try and make the top 10 sci-fi spacecraft and see if we could we could do it with the parts that we had. And and I think we were pretty successful. And, I mean, and again, we can't, we can't actually ship ship with these ship vehicles. The parts. <laughs> we can ship the parts, but it's pretty satisfying to like fly around in your X-wing fighter and blow up the Enterprise. I mean. Just, just, <laughs> Yeah, actually, the genre mixing in this game is hilarious because you can basically end up with an interstellar war between the Care Bears and the Klingons. You know, because the Bears have been so um, this is a little uh, snapshot of the, the library of parts that we put together for our, uh, for our building editor initially. And uh, we've since uh, made the parts much more kind of tangible and, and, uh, and realistic and less sort of abstract and platonic. But uh, just to give you a sense of that. This was uh, an early uh, visualization that I did uh, trying to get a sense of what it might be like to transform and deform these various parts. So this was a quick Maya mock-up um, where we were thinking, we want to have these parts, um, but uh, we want the parts to be kind of playful and toy-like and have a lot of range of possibilities with them. So this was the, kind of the first um, visualization of that. And yeah, this, what you're seeing here is the handles. Is the player picking up one of these blocks, they can stretch the handles and achieve any of these shapes. So these are showing all the different kind of more interpolations. So uh, just working as a, as a CG artist, one of the things that's a lot of fun is if a rigger rigs something for you, um, you have all these handles, and you can pull the handles, and the, the character will do some interesting things. You know, pull the handle, and it'll smile. You know, there's a, a little button that'll change its pose. And those are kind of fun as toys, and it, it always seemed like that should be exposed to the player too. I mean, it seems like those are those are kind of cool metaphors and toys, where the thing becomes this tangible little puppet that dances to your to your um, to your movements. And so, one of the things we wanted to do was expose kind of the the joy of I wouldn't say the joy of rigging, but maybe the joy of manipulating things with rigs to uh, to the player. And this is, uh, again, concept artist went through and did a whole batch of what might some of our crazy buildings look like. Um, let's see. And this was um, a very early mock-up where we're trying to get a sense of how the uh, building editor was going to work. And really, it's, it's, it's uh, kind of stacking blocks or Legos um, um, with um, sort of deceptively um, um, tricky work to do to make the whole thing deform properly. Um, uh, with deformations. Uh, and then this was, ignore this part, this was an idea that we could do some stylistic variation procedurally and it turned out to be too big of a pain. Um, let's see, just a quick example of one of our buildings. Uh, planets are another case that's kind of interesting because um, the player's gonna fly around in the galaxy. We never want them to see a repeated planet, um, but the planets, when they're unpacked, are, you know, they're six, five, twelve textures times three. The planets are like eight megabytes each. You know, we can't ship with, you know, a hundred thousand of those on a disk. And so we've got this similar scheme to, um, to the creature painting thing where these little particles crawl around the creature and can, you know, reason about it and decide what goes where with planets. And so we've got these little agents that say, I make mountains, and so I'm going to drive around and make mountains, and other ones make canyons, and other ones make oceans, and other ones make continents. So we've made this little... Yeah, the planets were a particular challenge for us because the gameplay has recurred so many different scales on this planet. You're down on ground level as a creature, or walking across this huge planet, but later in the game we have to be able to pull out, and the whole planet is now kind of this toy. And not only that, but the player eventually is going to edit the planet at the terraforming stage for the UFO. We wanted basically the user to have the ability to play with these very powerful tools, almost like clay. And KidPix was kind of our model for this. This is an old paint program for kids. And the tools in KidPix were just very surprising, fun to use, uh, kind of emergent right. tools. And the resultant planet has to take up, you know, maybe